Well, I might take issue with that. Karan Butler, the showcase for the sophomore, has been unbelievable in the first couple games, and the Salukis really had no answer for Mr. Butler tonight, adding to a two-game total of 55 points coming in. Bruce Weber knows his team had to shoot outside to stay in this game, but early on, Roland Roberts kicks it out, sets it Harrison on the cut, back to Roberts for the dunk. Roberts carrying the Salukis in the first half, then Kent Williams to a cutting Roberts. Later, Roberts on the offensive glass. You get the idea. Roland Roberts, the former Hokie transfer, was huge early. He's huge early. Gets Oakland in foul trouble, gets three fouls, and that really set them back. But then Karan Butler would step up. Huskies build in a small lead early as Butler finds the triple from the corner. Then Ben Gordon, the young guy, played well, and he looks for Butler. On the break, big guy runs the floor so well, Dick. I'll tell you one thing, he's so explosive, the Super South. Really a great talent. I love him. Karan Butler is special. Harrison off for the three. Again, they push it. Gordon to Butler. Great catch. Great catch. Jam up, up, and away. Slam, jam, bam. And a silly foul there off the missed three. Tony Robertson to Leek Brown. Okafor, the other big guy running the ball. Oh, that diaper dandy is special. Remember the name, Amika Okafor. Huskies trying to pull away. Robertson, Okafor. He had nine, but contributed all over the court. It's a 10-point lead at that point, Digger. Well, then you got to get to the D. Defense. And when this happens, Johnny Selby does a pretty good job going inside. Roberts has been bugging him all night long. And watch the weak side help on the post feed. Gets it done. Double down. Gets a steal. Saves it. Easy transition points for UConn. They did this all night. Touch play back and forth. Get it done inside. UConn not great, though, at putting away teams all year. And the Salukis would hang around. Dearman cuts it to six with the jumper inside of three and a half. But finally, the Huskies down the stretch make the plays to salt this away. Gordon shows the quickness. Nice little dish underneath for Butler to land. He finished with 19 points on six of 16. Connecticut advances 71-59. Gordon, after being scoreless on Sunday, chips in with 12 points. Huskies survive a 37% shooting in the second half and 16 turnovers. But march on. Jim Calhoun, proud of his team. Uh, we felt coming in that Southern Illinois was a terrific basketball team. They'd just proven that. But we think we were a little better. And that's the thing we probably convince our kids more of than don't get upset because this is an opportunity for us. And I know I said this through the whole press conference, but we have earned our way to the NCAA tournament. And so I look at it as being much more a great opportunity for our kids to go someplace special. I think Sunday starts to be pretty special. And I think uh, after 40 minutes, if God willing, and we play great and whatever happens, it could be even more special. Now, the defense has certainly been special. 12 straight Connecticut opponents have held under 80 points. You see the field goal percentage and particularly the three-point percentage in these three games. Saluki's one of 14. And ties between these teams. Tubby Smith, a Maryland native, almost went to Maryland. Keith Bogans in a math grad just a couple miles away from the Maryland campus. Oak Hill High School teammates Blake and Hawkins, the seniors on both teams, have played three previous times. So a lot of familiar turf as they took on each other in Syracuse tonight. Here's Blake, the floor general. It would not be a vintage Blake night. Sean Prince, the brilliant game in round two. And Juan Dixon, the all-time leading scorer at Maryland. Early on, Keith Bogans playing well against Maryland as a Baltimore guy was very inspired. Knocks down the triple. Look at Dixon. <laughs> back to back 29 point games in this tournament. Banks in the three. Then Hawkins finds Jules Kamara for the dunk. Terps would lead most of the first half. Chris Wilcox, watch, quick off the floor. Terps by six at the break. Digger Gary Williams had a strong plan on the second half. Yeah, I guarantee at halftime they went, let's get the ball inside. Blake drives it, get it in. Lonnie Baxter, great play on the jam. Tayshawn Prince tries to answer with the three. Pretty good job defending him all night. He converts this open look, and then they pound it back inside to Baxter. Wilcox got to get it going himself. Baxter Wilcox is dominating the paint. Baxter takes it this time. Next time down, get it right inside. Pound the ball. Good job. Take it into Kentucky. They couldn't take the pressure with Estelle and Kam Kamara in the paint. Baxter again. And that's what really happened in that second half. Points in the paint. Nothing gets you more excited than points oh, in the paint. Got it, 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 nothing it, in this world. The balance of a game. <laughs> like great teams. When you balance inside, points outside. In like that points in the paint. Absolutely, baby. The sequence here. Bad decision by yeah, Blake. Terrible again. decision. You watch seven, seven with the ball. Lead. Absolutely. This could have cost them, but Kentucky couldn't convert.
Big story in this game was the fact that they shut down Prince and Bogans. Held him at 12 for 29. Domination inside. When you look at the play of Blake, Blake orchestrating everything. And on the inside, Wilcox. And certainly, when you talk about Baxter, they had 31 down in the interior. Here the Nicholas off the pans of Bogans right there. Tayshawn Prince is career at Kentucky is over. Gary Williams and the Terps on to the Elite Eight. Good friends right there. 78-68 is the final. Terps from the line, 21 of 24. Dixon had 19 points. Baxter, 16. Wilcox, 15. The typical balance of the Terrapins and Gary Williams. Well, I, I know Jim Calhoun pretty well when he was at uh, BU and I was at BC. We played every year. And then when he was at Connecticut, uh, we played some. So, um, his teams always get better, you know, and and they they were pretty young. They were trying to, you know, feel their way with their team. Whereas we were the veteran team. Uh, I think any time you have a veteran team, you have an advantage in November and December. And um, so now it's two different teams. But the other part of that is we're a better team now than we were when we played Connecticut back then. Also. Gary not taking much time to savor this one before looking ahead to that rematch of the game he referred to the Maryland victory in the MCI Center. Both teams certainly have come a long way. I don't know what you can draw from that game, but TJ Ford at Texas, the first freshman to lead the nation in assists ever. And Luke Ridnour, last year's Pac-10 Freshman of the Year, a sensational mop top sophomore for the Oregon Ducks who plays for another former Oregon point guard in Ernie Kent. And with his team winning their first Pac-10 title since 39 in the first Sweet 16 since 1960, spent much of the pregame talk talking to his team about a chance to make even more history. This is to get to the Elite Eight, so I don't care. Hey, we can be hurt, we can be tired and all that tomorrow. Like I said, we can do that a couple months from now, but you need to do whatever it takes to get this thing done right here. If it means die, die. If it means take the charge, take the charge. Help up your teammate, help up your teammate. Dunk on someone, dunk on someone. But let's play hard and let's go get this, because this is all right here within our grasp right now. Put me in, coach. I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. Hey, they came out and played well early. Pretty good. I'm speed. really all fired up. I'll tell you, I love the two Lukes. <laughs> cool hand Luke, man. Luke Jackson and Luke Rittenauer. My kind of guy. Hey, sweet Luke, baby. Watch him shoot the rock. I love that hairdo. I just love anybody's hairdo. <laughs> Jackson will drill the three. Watch this shot. Time running down in the first half. Knocks down the long triple. 17 points in the first half for Jackson. Kent with the body English. Ducks by 13. The Longhorns, though, chipping away, hanging around. Brian Boddicker knocks down the triple. They begin to eat away. Freddie Williams hits the prayer shot and draws the foul. Now it's a three-point game. Boddicker again for the triple as they just back off him. 15-2 Texas run ties the game at 51. Now, final minute, 68 all. Ridden out. Around the screen, knocks down the big jumper. Oregon up by two. Final 30 seconds. James Thomas. Down low, he had a muscle inside hoop, and the foul ties the game in 70. A chance to give Texas its first lead ever with 23 seconds to go. Cannot get the free throw to go. Oregon with the ball. Freddie Jones, tick, 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 tick. Only one field goal all night until he gets the roll right there. Watch again, Jones, the great body control. They clear out for him. They were looking for the mismatch. This is what they wanted. They get it, but still the tough shot under pressure. Last chance for Texas, two-pointed to go. TJ Ford, pretty good look on the run for the tie. Doesn't get it to go. Oregon does march on to the Elite Eight, but it was a struggle against a very game Texas team. That's a big win, and we're in the Elite Eight. First time this program has ever seen this position in a long, long time. But, fellas, we talked about this, and I don't even know if you believe me or believed us or even believe yourselves when we talked about it for one that Pac-10 championship that this team is good enough to get to the Final Four. You are one game away, and once you get to the Final Four, you're going to be challenged forever. Ducks, normally a really good free throw shooting team, made it interesting by hitting just four of ten, but the Lukes combined for 45, Jackson with 25, Ridnour with 20. Still, though, they came away impressed with the Longhorns and their young point guard. They're a real scrappy team tonight, and, uh, you know, unfortunately we, you know, we made Ford take a tough shot there at the end and, uh, you know, pulled away with the win. But you got to give Texas a lot of credit. They really played uh, their heart out tonight, and, you know, 
you know, they're a good team. You always dream that you can't make the big shot, but then again, realistically, you're not going to make every every shot to win a game or tie the game. So that's just part of life. It didn't go in, so I just got a little with it, and I felt that we had a real good season. I did the best that I could, even though I didn't play my best game, and I just had to look forward to next year, and I guarantee you that I'll be a better player next year than I am this year. You can see it's becoming a very special year for Oregon sports with the football team having a great season. And now the regional final appearance is the <laughs> Illinois and Kansas. Of course, a rematch of last year's tournament game. Same round when Illinois physically hammered the Jayhawks into submission. Enter some fresh young faces. Guys that when Drew Gooden talked about last year's game just kind of had a glazed over look. They weren't aware of it. Maybe that's a good thing. This is a brand new Kansas team taking on the Illini in this regional semi. Frank Williams spins and misses the lay, and Williams is the guy who really killed Kansas a year ago, but an 0 for 5 start for Williams. Kripalia misses the short jumper. The Illini off in the early going. Drew Gooden, sweet move on the baseline. Kansas up by 4. Illinois, though, hanging around despite Frank's slow start. Begins to heat up, knocking down the long triple. The Illini take the lead, and then Aaron Miles was key, Dick. Yeah, Aaron Miles had a great game, the point guard, the diaper dandy. He really responded. He had 13 points, seven rebounds, and five assists. Had superb quickness. And I'll tell you, got a lot of help from Keith Langford as well, who had 15 points. And Simeon, the three of them, had half of their points. Look at that quickness. Look at that explosiveness. He was the quarterback. He was an absolute unbelievable option quarterback. They would look to him with the shot clock running down. Frank Williams outlets to Luther Head. The lay and ties the game at 45. Later. Simeon gets inside. That's the added muscle the Jayhawks didn't have last year. The hoop and the foul. It's a six-point lead. Then Miles. Look at this bounce pass. Oh, you mentioned one, Langford. One diaper dandy to another diaper dandy. I love them. It's Chant Rock Chalk Jayhawk. But down the stretch, Shigger was the big guy. It's and persistent, tough underneath. Collison in foul trouble in the first half, comes out in the second half and gets it done inside, making things happen. But Archibald inside over Collison for the tip in gets the Illini back within three final 30 seconds two point game cook. This is not what you want a cook three pointer what an atrocious shot Drew Gooden gets the rebound but Boshi misses the front end Williams brings it up Kripalia watching the lane here Demir Kripalia will come free. He'll have a wide open shoot the ball footer oh, pitch shoot it back the ball. out. Finally, Williams baseline for the tie. The iron on Kine. Kansas the rebound. Bill Self's team had chances. They, they played tough, hung around, but Kansas breathes a sigh of relief and marches on one win away from their first Final Four since 1993. Jayhawks get 25 points off the bench, 15 and 13 from Drew Gooden and Rory Williams on the game being a battle with Heinrich on the bench most of the night in foul trouble. It was a battle all night long. Uh, never felt comfortable, never felt like we got comfortable on the offensive end, and it was a, a battle of the defensive end of the floor, I thought, with both teams. It's not comfortable with Kirk sitting over there with me as much as he was. It's not comfortable with Nick sitting over there with me. And I think that saying that, you've got to just realize how big that Aaron Miles and Keith Langford were for us tonight. Um, I think in the second half, one of the one of the keys, if not the biggest one, is that we did continue to try to push the ball, and we got some easy ones because it was very difficult to score against their defense. Heinrich and Collison combining for just 30.